listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 101. We are continuing in the book of Deuteronomy. And let me ask you a question Think about your biggest bill or loan. Maybe it's a mortgage or a credit card. And let's say you got that bill and it said balance equals zero. That's it. Debt canceled. Well, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 15, all debts are canceled every seven years by the Lord. Now tell me, if the Lord canceled your debts, would you not say hallelujah wherever you stood? However, there are some special requirements to be a part of this seven-year debt cancellation program. So you want to stay tuned for that. And as we continue into Deuteronomy 16, there are other laws concerning slaves, rules about firstborn animals, rules about the Passover, and then there is a couple of festivals that need to be discussed. And finally, Moses leaves us with the important note that God genuinely does hate idols, especially wooden poles that honor the goddess Asherah. We are also continuing the book of Luke, and we see Jesus truly standing up to the authorities in his day, to the biggest one being the Pharisees. And of course, there's Herod, who is like a silent serial killer, just kind of looming in the background. And Jesus stands toe to toe with the Pharisees, when it comes to religious law. But then he also teaches an important lesson on humility. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. I want to welcome our newest patron, Chris Wallace from North Carolina to the family. Thank you for your continued support of this ministry. You will be receiving a cool flash drive with all 365 episodes. If you would like a flash drive for yourself or a loved one, just go to our Patreon page and sign up for the Digital Angel tier. Let's get started. Deuteronomy 15 The following is a letter written to the Israelites from Moses. The special year of canceling debts. At the end of every seven years, you must cancel debts. This is the way you must do this. Everyone who has lent money to another Israelite must cancel the debt. You should not ask a fellow Israelite to repay the debt, because the Lord told you to cancel debts during that year. You may require a foreigner to repay you, but you must cancel any debt another Israelite owes you. There should not be any poor people in your country, because the Lord your God has given you this land, and the Lord will greatly bless you. But this will happen only if you obey the Lord your God. You must be careful to obey every command that I have told you today. Then the Lord your God will bless you, as he promised. And you will have enough money to make loans to many nations. But you will not need to borrow from anyone. You will rule over many nations. But none of these nations will rule over you. When you are living in the land the Lord your God is giving you, there might be some poor people living among you. You must not be selfish. You must not refuse to give help to them. You must be willing to share with them. You must lend them whatever they need. Don't ever refuse to help someone simply because the seventh year, the year for canceling debts, is near. Don't let an evil thought like that enter your mind. You must never have bad thoughts about someone who needs help. You must not refuse to help them. If you don't help the poor, they might complain to the Lord, and he will judge you guilty of sin. So be sure to give to the poor. Don't hesitate to give to them, because the Lord your God will bless you for doing this good thing. He will bless you in all your work and in everything you do. There will always be poor people in the land. That is why I command you to be ready to help your brother or sister. Give to the poor in your land who need help. Letting slaves go free. You might buy a Hebrew man or woman to serve you as a slave. 
you may keep that person as a slave for six years. But in the seventh year, you must let that person go free. But when you let your slave go free, don't send him away with nothing. You must give him some of your animals, grain, and wine. The Lord your God blessed you and gave you plenty of good things. In the same way, you must give plenty of good things to your slave. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and the Lord your God set you free. That is why I am giving you this command today. What if one of your slaves says to you, I will not leave you. He might say this because he loves you and your family, and because he has a good life with you. Make this servant put his ear against your door and use a sharp tool to make a hole in his ear. This will show that he is your slave forever. You must do this even to the women slaves who want to stay with you. Don't regret letting your slave go free. Remember, he served you for six years, for half of what you would have paid a hired worker. The Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. Rules about firstborn animals. All the first male animals born in your herd and flock are special. You must give them to the Lord. Don't use any of these animals for your work and don't cut wool from any of these sheep. Every year, you must take these animals to the place the Lord your God will choose. There with the Lord, you and your family will eat these animals. But if an animal has something wrong with it, if it is lame or blind or has something else wrong with it, then you must not sacrifice that animal to the Lord your God. But you may eat the meat from that animal at home. Anyone may eat it, people who are clean and people who are unclean. The rules for eating this meat are the same as the rules for eating gazelles and deer. But you must not eat the blood from the animal. You must pour the blood out on the ground like water. Deuteronomy 16 the Passover. Remember, in the month of Abib, you must celebrate Passover to honor the Lord your God. It was that night in Abib when the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt. You must go to the place the Lord your God has chosen to be present among you. There you must offer the Passover sacrifice to honor the Lord. You must offer the cattle and goats. Don't eat bread that has yeast in it with this sacrifice. You must eat bread without yeast for seven days. This bread is called bread of trouble. It will help you remember the trouble you had in Egypt. Remember how quickly you had to leave that country. You must remember that day as long as you live. There must be no yeast in anyone's house anywhere in the country for seven days. And all the meat you sacrifice on the evening of the first day must be eaten before morning. You must not sacrifice the Passover animal in any of the towns that the Lord your God gives you. You must sacrifice the Passover animal only at the place where the Lord your God has chosen to be present among you. There you must sacrifice the Passover animal in the evening when the sun goes down. This is the festival when you remember that God brought you out of Egypt. You must cook the meal and eat it at the place the Lord your God will choose. The next morning you may go back home. You must eat bread without yeast for six days. On the seventh day, you must not do any work. On this day, the people will come together for a special meeting to honor the Lord your God. Festival of Harvest. You must count seven weeks from the time you begin to harvest the grain. Then celebrate the festival of harvest for the Lord your God. Do this by bringing him some special gift you want to bring. Decide how much to give by thinking about how much the Lord your God has blessed you. Go to the place where the Lord has chosen to be present among you. You and your people should enjoy yourselves together there with the Lord your God. Take all your people with you, your sons, your daughters, and all your servants. And take the Levites, immigrants, orphans, and widows living in your towns. Remember, you were slaves in Egypt, so be sure to obey these laws. 
festival of shelters. Seven days after you have gathered your harvest in from your threshing floor and from your wine press, you should celebrate the festival of shelters. Enjoy yourselves at this festival, you, your sons, your daughters, all your servants and the Levites, immigrants, orphans, and widows living in your towns. Celebrate this festival for seven days at the special place the Lord will choose. Do this to honor the Lord your God. The Lord your God blessed your harvest and all the work you did, so be very happy. Three times a year, all your men must come to meet with the Lord your God at the special place he will choose. They must come for the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of harvest, and the festival of shelters. Everyone who comes to meet with the Lord must bring a gift. Each man should give as much as he can. He should decide how much to give by thinking about how much the Lord your God has given him. Judges and Officials for the People Choose men to be judges and officials in every town that the Lord your God gives you. Every tribe must do this, and these men must be fair in judging the people. You must always be fair. You must not favor some people over other people. You must not take money to change your mind in judgment. Money blinds the eyes of wise people and changes what a good person will say. Be sure that you are good to everyone and always act fairly. Then you will live and keep the land that the Lord your God is giving you. God hates idols. When you set up an altar for the Lord your God, you must not place beside the altar any of the wooden poles that honor the goddess Asherah. You must not set up special stones for worshiping false gods. The Lord your God hates them. Luke chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. Just then some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Go away from here and hide! Herod wants to kill you! And Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox, Today and tomorrow I am forcing demons out of people and finishing my work of healing. Then the next day the work will be finished. After that I must go, because all prophets should die in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets! You stoned to death the people God has sent to you. How many times I wanted to help your people. I wanted to gather them together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you did not let me. Now your home will be left completely empty. I tell you, you will not see me again until that time when you will say, Welcome! God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord! On the Sabbath day, Jesus went to the home of a leading Pharisee to eat with him. The people there were all watching him very closely. A man with badly swollen arms and legs was there in front of him. Jesus said to the Pharisees and experts in the law, Is it right or wrong to heal on the Sabbath day? But they would not answer his question, so he took the man and healed him. Then he sent the man away. Jesus said to the Pharisees and experts in the law, if your son or work animal falls into a well on the Sabbath day, you know you would pull him out immediately. They could say nothing against what Jesus said. Then Jesus noticed that some of the guests were choosing the best places to sit. So he told this story. When someone invites you to a wedding, don't sit in the most important seat. They may have invited someone more important than you. And if you're sitting in the most important seat, they will come to you and say, I give this man your seat. Then you will have to move down to the last place and be embarrassed. So when someone invites you, go and sit in the seat that is not important. Then they will come to you and say, Friend, uh, move up here to this better place. What an honor this will be for you in front of all the other guests. Everyone who makes themselves important will be made humble. But everyone who makes themselves humble will be made important. Then Jesus said to the Pharisee who had invited him, 
When you give a lunch or a dinner, don't invite only your friends, brothers, relatives, and rich neighbors. At another time, they will pay you back by inviting you to eat with them. Instead, when you give a feast, invite the poor, the lame, and the blind. This will bring you great blessings because these people have nothing and cannot pay you back. But God will reward you on the day when all who please him will rise from death. Psalm chapter 44, verses 1 through 12. For the music director, a maskil from the Korah family. God, we have heard about you. Our ancestors told us what you did in their lifetime. They told us what you did long ago. With your great power, you took this land from other people and you settled our ancestors here. You crushed those other nations, but you made our ancestors successful. It was not our father's swords that took the land. It was not their strength that brought them victory. It was your power and strength. It was because you accepted them and smiled down on them. You are my God and my King. Give the command and lead Jacob's people to victory. We need your help to push our enemies back. Only by your power can we trample those who attacked us. I don't put my trust in my bow. My sword cannot save me. You are the one who saved us from our enemies. You are the one who put our enemies to shame. We have praised you all day long, and we will praise your name forever. Salah. But you rejected us and put us to shame. You did not go with us into battle. You let our enemies push us back. You let them take our wealth. You gave us a way like sheep to be killed and eaten. You scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for nothing. You did not even argue over the price. Thank you, everyone. That was day 101. Join us for day 102. We're continuing in the book of Deuteronomy. You'll hear about how to handle difficult court decisions, how to choose a king, how to support the priests and the Levites, and then you'll learn about the Lord's special prophet. And in the book of Luke, you'll hear a story about a big feast, and then the people must decide not if they will follow Jesus, but if they can, and at what cost. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.